After hundreds of 3D prints on my Bamboo Lab X1 carbon printer, I'm finally starting to have a problem and it's not going away. One of the best features of these 3D printers is that they don't need to be monitored. So this problem gets in the way of that. So we need to figure it out. So in this video, we're going to see if we can get to the source of that problem. So stick around. So sometimes the nozzle wiper isn't working properly and then we have filament being pulled into the build chamber. Sometimes it ends up in the bottom and sometimes it ends up on the build plate itself and rarely it will end up in your print as well. If you print with a lot of color for example, it can end up right in any layer of your color print. The nozzle wiper is used when filament needs to be flushed during a filament change for example. New filament is brought in and enough of it is put through the nozzle to make sure that it is ready to be extruded. Printer poop looks like this, but have you ever looked at them up close? Each has their own personality. Some poops aren't even remotely close in shape to the others. So having 100% success is pretty tough as it is. But I have noticed that I see this problem more often in pet G and that may be because it tends to be a bit more stringy. Okay, so the first thing I need to do, I want to swap out this filament. This is all PLA filament. And I'm going to put in some PET G. And I'm actually going to put in some PET G that I've had hanging around for a long time, especially this one. This one I have had a lot of trouble with in printing. So, kind of the worst case scenario. So, let me get these loaded in and we'll get some prints going. I should mention that all of these filaments have been recently dried. I've replaced the nozzle wiper with a new one as well, even though the old one had almost no visible wear on it. Let's get a print started with some color and see what happens. This first print had a few problems. One is that I set the flushing value way too low, which means that we're getting just tiny rabbit poops. But it obviously does show a problem. These poops are almost always coming into the build chamber rather than going down the chute. The second problem is that the print came away from the build plate. This print needs a brim for better contact. And the last problem is that it didn't finish at all because there was a nozzle clog and I had to stop it to figure it out. This is actually the first time I've had a nozzle clog on this printer. So let's try this again, but I'll shrink the size a bit and adjust the flushing values to what they should be. And we're still having a problem, but at least there's an improvement. We'll run the same test again, but adjust the nozzle temp down a little bit. It's at 255C right now, and this is a hardened steel nozzle, and it's running at a higher flow rate. Normally, the nozzle temperatures need to be set a little bit higher, but a lower temperature is worth a try. And we're not off to a good start. The first wipe pooped right into the build chamber, and it continues. The first color change didn't wipe well, and it's made its way onto the build plate. Now, there is a lot of poop stuck in the chute. That's another problem that doesn't happen often with PLA. I have only one more idea to help with this, and that is the nozzle. This is a hardened steel nozzle, and I checked it about a week ago for wear, and I didn't notice any, but I have printed a small amount of PET-G carbon fiber. So let's replace the nozzle assembly with a new one and see if that helps at all. And wow, this is actually a lot worse than I thought. The bottom of the nozzle is really hard to see inside of the build chamber. I had no idea that it was this bad. So I have a new 0.4 millimeter nozzle and I have a new sock as well. Let's get this together. Now if you want to know how to do this properly, Bamboo does have a video on it or you can buy a pre-assembled version to avoid having to do what I'm doing here. It's not that hard at all though, so it might be worth just doing it yourself to save a little bit of money. So we're off to a far better start, but I noticed that some pet G is getting stuck to the bottom of the nozzle and the occasional poop is being dropped onto the build plate as well. So it's better, but still not perfect. So we need to get this nozzle cleaned up and then we can rerun the exact same test. But this time I'm going to set the nozzle temperature to 273 degrees Celsius just to see what happens. I doubt it'll do anything good, but it's worth a try anyway. 
So I had to stop this test as well. And unfortunately there was a fail on this one also. Not necessarily because of the, the poop in the build chamber. There was a little bit, but there was a lot of stringing. The poop chute is completely jammed up with printer poop. This was a fail as well, but for a little bit different reason. But it does kind of highlight some of the issues with PETG, especially with PETG in color printing. So it's a lot more stringy. You have to make sure this material is super dry when you're printing with it. So what I like to do, I'm going to get this cleaned up completely, especially the nozzle because there's a lot of buildup again on the bottom of that nozzle. I'm going to switch over and do the exact same print in PLA and see what happens. And my hope is that it will be a perfect print in PLA and that we can really be definitive on what the cause is and that is that it's the material more than anything else. And I was so confident that the PLA test print would finish with no problems at all that I didn't even bother to time lapse record it. So it looks good. There's one or two very, very tiny blobs. So some of you may have already had this problem before and have gone looking for different solutions. One of the solutions that's out there is to use a silicone nozzle wiper. In my experience with the silicone wiper, it does not work as reliably as the stock version. I actually went ahead and designed my own version as well, and it still didn't work. Maybe it'll work better for you. I will link that in the description below as well if you'd like to try it out on your own. So exactly what is left then to test out to get this to work? There is a PTFE coating that you can apply to your nozzle and that prevents material from sticking to it, so that's an option. I think there's an opportunity as well to redesign the sock that goes around the nozzle and the heater block as well. And it should come down a little bit further to conceal more of the tip of the nozzle. So that's another option. And lastly, it's just to experiment with some different brands of PETG if you're really set on using that material. This printer prints extremely well in ABS and it prints extremely well in PLA in color. But PETG, it struggles with, at least it struggled with the PETG that I've tested. For those of you who didn't know, I am now full-time on content creation as of last week, which is a pretty big risk. I will be releasing between two and three videos a week each week. So hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell if you want to support this channel and help us to grow as well. And thanks once again to all of my patrons for helping to make videos like this possible. I hope you found this video helpful. Take care and we'll see you on the next one. So what's been happening lately is that the poop will end up poop, will end up printer poop ending up in the build chamber. Some little bit of poop that comes out. So if you're really set on spending, so if you're really, so if you are really set on using, <sighs> so if, so if you're, So if you're really set on printing in multicolor in PET G, it's something to be aware of before you buy a whole bunch of spools of that material.